twenty twenty is it twenty twenty three? Yeah, twenty twenty three guy. I had to check that. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant. Middle Yay. of the week, Jill. We are here. Everything's yes. going to be nice and smooth. It's not going to be like last week when we're like coming live uh, from Discord. Oh boy, <laughs> that was nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um, Discord has a. I went and like looked it up, and it's like a noise detection thing. So if it gets a high spike. So anytime like you laughed like directly into the mic, yeah, it just mute you. Uh, so there were like a couple of spots where you laughed and you said something, but it was quick enough to pick back up. So if it sounded a little bit weird last week, that's what it was. But we're mm. back on Jitsi, everybody. Yay! In a very special way, too. Vent's going to tell you about. I got a... Uh, well, you go ahead and tell them what you've been up to this morning. Why? Uh, okay. I, I said okay. I can look at some of these numbers. Okay, sounds good. So... This morning, I watched the Diversity Summit, which was streamed on YouTube from the Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit Europe in Spain. Woohoo! I, I love when these conventions come around. And I plan to watch the keynote speech tomorrow and other great talks. Tomorrow, uh, Fatima from GitLab is speaking, and she's one of my favorite speakers. So I have to tune in and, and get up early to watch that. And but it it started when uh, today Wednesday um, and it goes on through Friday so there's still plenty of time to to uh, watch a lot of great talks on every subject you can think of on Linux and open source so go go check it out it's always a lot of fun and back in the open source summit here in the U.S. in Los Angeles in 2017, I got to meet and talk with Linus Torvalds, and I had had shared that here on LWW, and and that was so much fun. Right <laughs> and that was uh, such that's a joy. Events.linuxfoundation.org, right? Yeah, correct. Cool. And go check that out. Um, yeah. So Jitsi did an update last week, right? And um, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Maybe you know. Every time I do an update to the Jetsy server. It's always fall like, let's see what I got to go back and play with. Mm -hmm. Everything looked fine until we went to use it last Wednesday and I get a message from Jill and I'm like, again, like, oh, what's going on? Maybe we'll try a different browser. <laughs> yeah. And after the show, I thought I'd fixed it and I, it was an intermittent issue. Then, of course, you go to the GitHub and you check issue tracker and there's like 20 people have already posted an issue. I'm like, ah, I found my issue and we're still waiting for it to get fixed. It's an issue with, um, oh, here's the, here's the beautiful thing about it. It's an issue with Edge and Chrome. So when you log in, you try to graze out the audio and video. And, you know, we kind yeah. of didn't need that for Jits. <laughs> yeah, just slightly. Yeah. It was like a little circular icon yeah. that kept spinning. <laughs> like, I guess we could have brought up, uh, like, Jitsi the chat and typed to each other, but that would have been about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I hear what you're saying. What about Firefox, Ben? You're right. You're right. Turns out it works with Firefox. Good on you, Mozilla. So Saturday, we got the sword. We don't have to worry about it. We're just using Firefox. It was adorable. We, get Firefox. <laughs> we spent an entire hour trying to get it. We got it to log in. It was working good. Well, good. It was working. It was functioning. And uh, the, but the video was Jordan's video was like pixelated. Then we reset some things and the video just disappeared and we couldn't get video back. And I'm reading Sunday afternoon when I push, there's a bug in the latest version of Firefox with Jitsi. So we were doomed. Like yeah. that entire hour we oh, spent in the pre pre super shows and we couldn't have won the battle. <laughs> there was nothing we could have done uh. to had a working solution. So I found the correct version of Jitsi. I've rolled it back and um, typically we run our Jitsi server on a Linode instance because I got a couple of those set up, you know, Trackmania server and stuff like that. I just spool it out. I'm like, yeah. I'm just thinking about that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's see if Raspberry Pis are wrong because, you know, you can kind of get them now, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're not reasonably priced. <laughs> ish. Yeah. <laughs> ish. I, I, I was doing, I was taking some looks. Uh, Last night on the Amazon, which I and because I went to Adafruit first and like all out of stock. I'm like, let's see what let's see what the scalper price is. Pretty reasonable. You can get a four gig for like sixty bucks, and I think mm -hmm. eight gigs like 
$79, which considering they were 75, like we're getting back to where they should be. And another thing I was kind of disappointed about. Mm -hmm. When did the Raspberry Pi 4 come out? Oh, gosh. Okay, so my Raspberry Pi 400 came out during the pandemic. It was like at that end of that year. So I'd have to say 2019. Mm. Is, that, is that right? Or June 2018? 2019. Okay. You got yes. it. <laughs> For those of you watching the video, there it is. There's a wiki image, that little critter. Now, here's something that I was a little disappointed with because I was doing a bit of a deep dive. I'm like, price performance. That's still the best price performance option out there right now as a Raspberry Pi 4. Even though we have these 16 gig SOCs, you know, from Orange Pi and with the new rock chips and uh, moral of the story, everybody. That's our mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi sitting back here in the rack right now, running our Jitsi server from home. Yay, isn't that cool? <laughs> Made it happen. This is a project Absolutely. I started on uh, before the pandemic, like um, maybe, oh, I don't know. When 20, when were the dark times? There it is, a little bigger for everybody. So it was just Jill running. We're using about a gigabyte of RAM and uh, about 40%. On the CPU, not too bad. Not too bad. And, <laughs> you know, b before the shortages and everything, I was like, yeah, this might be an interesting project. And I never could get it to work. So I went back and revisited it, and nobody had really taken a crack at it since, you know, there'd been some updates to Jitsi that broke the initial, you know, somebody kind of got it to work. And there's some other issues. Well, like when you're sitting behind a NAT, right? Because what do you need to get your own Jitsi server? You got to have fully qualified domain name. You know, you got to go get a domain name. You get them yeah. for free if you want. Okay. That's really your only expense. You could have a Raspberry Pi or maybe something cheaper. I'm thinking maybe we could try to do this with like an Orange Pi 3, which I think I found a kit for like 40 bucks for one of those. Yeah. You need that, but you got to make some modifications to Jitsi because chances are once you set it up, you probably want to be able to talk to people like Jill's on one of the PCs under here, you know, there's three boxes under here and I need my system just to connect with that inside the LAN, but Jill's got to connect over the LAN and with the NAT stuff. So you got to do some extra configurations to the SIP communicator to get it to translate everything. Oh, that was a little bit of a sticking point, but I think we got it working. Yeah. looks beautiful. It's nice yeah. and crisp too, Ben. <laughs> Handled all of my uh, audio modifications. So Jill yeah. sounds like Jill again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll probably do a video on that just because it's relatively simple to do. Like, if you are the type of person who likes to host stuff at home, you know, why not host your own? Because uh, I think I could get this to where you could have it set up in like 20 minutes. Awesome. But it's one of those <laughs> things, like, if you have the instructions in front of you and you don't have to go searching because we've all, we've all yeah. been there, right? You spend like two <laughs> days finding... In, there's always that one piece of information that you don't even remember how you got to it, how you found it, but you finally found it. You're like, I would have never found this. I'm going to take all that information, stick it together, and have a updated 2020, is it 2023? Yeah, 2023. 2023 guy. I had to check that. <laughs> guy for everybody, so you can roll your own Jitsi server. and Because um, you can definitely get higher quality audio and video than you're going to be able to get out of um, Discord. Case mm -hmm. in point. So, and you don't need a ton of bandwidth to do it either. But we're really going to be stress testing that, not today so much, but definitely on a Saturday show. We're, we're, I'm going to. Yeah. This is the. Uh, <laughs> is it going to explode test? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there'll be three of you on <laughs> on Saturday. Definitely, and <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ratchet up some settings even higher. So, Jill, let's get into it with. More whale and talk. Everybody loves it when we talk about whale. Yeah. Well, this is something very important. So we have big news coming from Fedora. When Fedora Linux 40 releases next year, which will be sometime in May of 2024, they will release the KDE Plasma 6 desktop in the Fedora Linux KDE spin. Now, this we've known for some time, but with this release, 
Fedora Linux is proposing to offer the KDE Plasma 6 desktop on Wayland only and drop the X11 session. <laughs> this is big news. And all X11 applications would still be supported, but we'll be using X Wayland instead. And yeah, so back in May of this year, we had talked about one of the reasons for X11 being possibly deprecated in the Fedora KDE Plasma 6 release is that the Xorg display server has been deprecated since the release of RHEL 9.0 in May of 2022 and will most likely be removed in future major RHEL releases. Well, I'd heard confirmation that RHEL is, you know, is officially dro uh, dropping um, X11 in future releases. So that was confirmed. But this actually makes sense also for, Do for Fedora because Fedora is upstream of Red Hat Linux Enterprise. And it just it so makes sense. And uh, something else that's already happening actually on my current release of Fedora Linux uh, KDE Spin, it also defaults to Wayland, but it lets you exit out to the login screen and switch back to X11 when you log back in. So that option is there, but they're planning to take that option out, it looks like. <laughs> so, you know, starting uh, in May of next year, you know, X11 may be a thing of the past in Fedora and all real products. So that, that's going to be an interesting future of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely if you could be dealing with KDE, but a lot of people yeah. are like, yeah, but what about no? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's probably coming. <laughs> it just might be yeah. because there is another proposal right here to evaluate the X11 session offering for GNOME mm -hmm. as well. So, I mean, yeah. this is good to see. This is good mm -hmm. to see. I'm not anti Wayland by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do like to point out, very pragmatic. Like, I believe, like, you need to address the actual issues. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked to, uh, you know, somebody who was very cheerleady about Wayland and kind of yeah. glossing over some of the um, serious, crippling problems with Wayland. So, uh, to get the ball rolling, I think this is fantastic. There are still issues. And, of course, they are NVIDIA issues, as you might mm -hmm. guess, uh, yes. on top of everything else. But, you know, one of them is, like, the this is an open bug right now which is the Glamour renders, and that's for X Wayland. So that's a mm. problem. That's got to mm -hmm. get fixed before they're going to push it out. And if they do it with GNOME, I, I want somebody to do it. I want somebody to do it. Fedora is, you know, could we call Fedora bleeding edge in the days of Arch? Not really. It's more like a seeping edge. You know, it's that not really like a edge. full, you know, open wound. But, I mean, it's still pretty recent. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But, and they, you know, they were the one of the first to have uh, Gnome on Wayland and it works really well. I've been using Gnome on Wayland on uh, Fedora for a while. It, works great. it does work. It worked actually really well with my last install, uh, Fedora 38 with the NVIDIA drivers. It actually worked quite well. Now, I have seen people ask, like, when is NVIDIA really going to like get some momentum on this? That's when RHEL makes the switch, because that, that's where mm -hmm. NVIDIA is focused right there. That's, that's enterprise yeah. customers and all that. Yes. Now, and that, that's going to be quite a ways down the road. So don't get too excited just yet for NVIDIA, because it's yeah. going to be a while before RHEL is going to be switching over to Wayland, because they're dealing with enterprise customers. And you know what you don't? There, there's a very, yeah. you think I'm, <laughs> I'm curmudgeon when I'm like, it's not broke, don't fix I ain't got nothing on them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I ain't got nothing on them. They're like, nah, -uh, we're, <laughs> all this stuff works. It's going to continue working. We're not changing this. Why will we upgrade? Not it? updating, yeah. <laughs> so fun to watch. Good times. Um, yeah, I, I too want everything to just work. That's where I want it to get, where no one even re realizes it. You know, I was like, hey, mm -hmm. are you running? I'm like, oh, cool. I'm doing this on Wayland. Neat. But speaking of NVIDIA, oh, right. Uh, the XFC, there was a little bit of an update. They, they've decided, here's the movement. Not really a story. They've What was it? Uh, they've decided which, uh, they're going to be using WL Roots over LibMutter. That's, yeah. that's the latest update for XFC this week. Yeah, and no X Wayland, which, I, which is kind of a surprise. <laughs> so. We'll see. Okay. 
Nuvo. You know what that is? It's hard yes. to spell. That's what it is. <laughs> Whenever you install Ubuntu, you know, back in the day, the Nuvo drivers would just launch. <laughs> so. um, there was one where I was trying to install CentOS. Uh, this was a couple years back because I just got in the um, NVIDIA 2060. Mm. And it was brand new. You know, I ordered that thing on launch day. It was, that, that card was like custom made for my particular use case. And I was trying to get CentOS installed. But the Nuvo drivers hadn't been updated to the point to where it could install. So I had to like VPN into the box. <laughs> it, it was oh, yeah. the most convoluted back and forth oh, way to get it up boy. and running. But for the most part, if you run into Nuvo, you've used it like that. You had an NVIDIA card, you installed it. You needed just a GUI display to get you up and running, get through that installer. And that's what it's always been good for. But mm -hmm. the man behind it, Ben, has resigned from Red Hat. He plans on stepping back from the development. And, you know, that's kind of going to be a little bit of a blow for the open source NVIDIA Linux drivers. However, he has pushed out a pretty chunky patch um, that's going to lay the groundwork for utilizing the GSP firmware that NVIDIA released. Now, that's eventually going to add support for reclocking, which has been a big issue with NVIDIA cards to give you variable clock rate so it's not running full tilt all the time for the 20, 30, and 40 series GPUs. And it's also going to make um, future development relatively easy. And he thinks, you know, with the work being done by Calibora and NVK, that it's going to be in good hands. And I think that's true. Yeah. And he does make a point. He's like, man, I still got a 4070 in the system. I'm not going to disappear. I'm still going to be <laughs> yeah. poking my head in, and which is good. And this guy, <laughs> like, he's been maintaining this since well before it was in the kernel. You know, like, just, just a true psychopath that my kind of psychopath, that type of madman, like I'm going to reverse engineer the NVIDIA driver. I'm like, that's so cool. And it's been fun to watch the progress over the years. And like I was saying, me, I typically only use the Nuvo driver on a rare occasions during an install, I think was um, kind of it, mainly due to that limited functionality. And even then, when I was running uh, Nuvo on Jackbox for an old Quadro that I had. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it was always because I knew that card was just running a hundred percent all the time. You know, frequency scaling it wasn't yes. there. It was just on, it's getting burr, hot, right? Yeah. So the uh, fans the, running, right? Oh, yeah. And that GSP firmware. Fortunately, you could control the fans manually, but you couldn't do anything about the clocks. But this new GSP firmware is going to be adding that support, which I think is really fantastic. And you know that this new patch that he dropped before departing, I think, is a Excellent parting yeah. gift, and it's going to allow development to like speed up, get some semblance of parity. We're down the road. Uh, we'll have a viable open source NVIDIA driver, much like AMD has compared to yeah. their binary driver, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And what was so funny is when uh, Ven put this in our show notes, I was right. I was on our Linux, trolling our Linux on Reddit and saw this announcement right when he posted it in our show notes. So that, that was perfect timing. Um, and I want to, you know, wish happy travels and adventures to you, Ben Skeggs. You've put in so much work and with Red Hat and with the Nouveau drivers. And, you know, you really have left the Nouveau drivers at a great spot with a bright future and in capable hands. So congratulations to you and enjoy your journeys. And have fun with uh, still coming back and testing your GPU. <laughs> Jill, do you like giving away all of your personal information online? Uh, no. <laughs> and so I'm so so happy there is an awesome update to one of my favorite, you know, extensions. <laughs> Something for the that web I've been browser. using for a yeah. long, long time, and you should be too. I've definitely talked about it on the yeah. show before. Privacy Badger. This has been since 2014. Free plugin download it and use it that mm -hmm. if i if you cut off the show right there <laughs> go ahead and just go do that doesn't matter if you're in firefox edge chrome whatever and so what does it do i mean this thing stops advertisers other 30 third party trackers from tracking you anywhere you go any of the pages that you look at now this latest update the reason i want to talk about it is um they're changing the way it fights link tracking from google the googs Things like mm -hmm. Google Docs, 
the Gmail, Google Maps, uh, image results, all that. This updated plugin replaces the tracking URLs it's using the content script and the beacon request are now being blocked on the network layer. Now they do kind of point out, because we know Manifest V3, which is a new thing coming to Google Chrome, it's not going to allow them to do the redirect request anymore. Yet they kind of say they're like they they kind of have hope that maybe we can get some changes made to it. I don't think Google wants that for obvious reasons because yeah. they would love to be <laughs> able to track you because it's Google. Yes. Um, just go download and install this. Like this was you know worth putting in the show just to, so I'd have an excuse to talk about it because the EFF is doing the good job. It's fighting the yeah. good fight. Okay. So yesterday was um, International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Yes, it was. Good timing, Ben. <laughs> Why is that even relevant, Jill? Oh, because it's uh, oh a, a certain name of a pie hat we're going to talk about called Sailor Hat, or as Ven likes to call it, the Yar Pie Hat. <laughs> Yar. Hackaday. Hackaday. Apostrophes yes. are important. Um, yes. uh, so th just saying. <laughs> uh, pies, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. So funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> but Brian, instead of um, P, it could be, yeah. at least it's not P I S S, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So that makes me laugh. Okay. So this is actually the sailor hat for the Raspberry Pi, which provides clean power for the Pi and will eliminate corrupting the SSD during those, you know, pesky brownouts and power shutdowns. And some of the awesome features are with 12 volt or 24 volt power, which is commonly used in boats and vehicles. This Pi hat allows you to power down your Raspberry Pi safely. Because the Sailor Hat uses supercapacitors and ensures that intermittent power outages are ignored and your server continues to hum along quite smoothly. And the Raspberry Pi will shut down safely because it is informed about power outages. And it has a real-time clock, which will keep your Pi synchronized. And it has a backup battery. So this, you know... This is a great Raspberry Pi for Raspberry Pi projects and environments where stable and clean power is an issue, like on vehicles and boats. And it's kind of, Ven, to me, this is kind of like an awesome surge protector for your Raspberry Pi with a bit of a UPS thrown in. <laughs> it's a, a little combination of, of both to, you know, give you clean power. I mean, let's just go ahead and cut right to it. Have you been looking for an excuse to have supercapacitors on your pie like me? <laughs> I know. Look at those chunky things. <laughs> like, come on. Those <laughs> things have been in the future for the next 30 years or the past 30 years. Uh, th this thing's got you covered, man. I mean, it, it is a pie hat. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you live in a place where, where, you know, Jill doesn't have to worry about it. Like, But if you live in a place with a bunch of fires, earthquakes, or uh, brownouts... <laughs> <laughs> it happens, yes. <laughs> Something like this would be important. Now, yeah, the UPS, not, I mean, you shouldn't really think of it as UPS. Like, this this is going to buy you enough time. You, we're talking about the, uh-oh, lighthouse. A couple seconds. Right, right, yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> It'll keep you going through that. And really important thing, it's going to be able to handle power-hungry devices. So if you get displays plugged into this thing, SSDs plugged into your pipe, it's still got you. It's still got you for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um and you can build your own. Well, I want to talk about this. Completely open source. You can get the part list. Do everything yourself. Or it's 60 mm -hmm. bucks if you want to buy one pre-made. Yeah. I mean, come on. Great deal. Yeah. Like, is, is there any price to put on, you know, uh, <laughs> super capacitors for your Raspberry Pi? Yeah. <laughs> and now that the prices of Raspberry Pis are coming back down to... Uh... <laughs> coming out of the stratosphere. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> Stock still needs to get better, though. Yeah, still it does. Needs to, and we need a Raspberry Pi 5. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it needs <laughs> to be able to dance. I don't know. I'm just, if I'm wishing for stuff right now, but why not? Um, yeah, we need that 16, 16 gigabyte of RAM Pi. Awesome. Uh, before we get out of here, hey, if you like the show, you're like, hey, you know, I want to help you out a little bit, we'll get a support mm -hmm. button. 
We got Patreons, all of our beautiful patrons making this show possible. I want to thank each and every one of you. In fact, I will when I roll the qu- uh, quedits. Yes. The yeah, quedits. quedits. <laughs> all them quedits. <laughs> We're going to put those in your face. Uh, we have Patreon. We got LibrePay. We got PayPal. A couple of uh, other ways to donate. We got wish lists. It's been a while since I've looked at Jill's Amazon wish list. <laughs> It's I like penguins, those penguins all the way down. All the way. No, <laughs> no, no. Combo breaker. That's not a penguin. <laughs> no, that's a, a a keyboard display like the one I have behind me. <laughs> uh, I got one for the studio. If you want to end up on this blinky wall of nonsense behind me, you're welcome to. But uh, we do appreciate your support. If you do back some patron, you get the live and uncut versions of this. You might notice that we have those on our uncut YouTube channel. They come out a week later. But if you want it in podcast format and you want it, like this afternoon, it'll be there. So you can check out the live show on your schedule instead of being, you know, if you can't make the live show. That's fine. Um, we do the pre, pre super shows and extra hour of content for LGC early access, usually about a week earlier. Take a look at some of the video stuff I'm working on behind the scenes things and, uh, hop in our discord. You get discord access. Also, if you're a uh, Twitch sub and come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays, yeah, we do so much fun. Track mania, which is silly because you look at either one of us and you're like, <laughs> neither of you look like race car driving enthusiasts because we're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're not either. It, it's a weird mental game you got to play to get over. You're like, no, I'm not, not big into racing games. We don't. Yeah. Really... <laughs> and when we say we play track mania stadium too, like, that sounds yeah, an awful lot like a racing game. Like 3D puzzle platformer. <laughs> yes. It, it's maximum silliness <laughs> physics problems and uh contagious laughter and good times so if you're looking for a group of people to get together we have an awesome group of people yeah. on uh, tuesdays and fridays we've got a track mania mm-hmm. server that's up 24 7 even if you're just like man i just want to jump in there and show you people how it's done yeah your scores please will do. be recorded yeah, we can <laughs> take out. and um yeah well if you want to come by friday we'll be doing that at 7 30 yeah. so that's <laughs> gonna do it for this week's weekly Daily Wednesdays. Let's see if we can bring up. Yay! Got lots Some of awesome credits. Are lot, and lots of awesome patrons to thank. And one. <laughs> I hear. And I hear zero. the music. <laughs> there's the music. Ah, and there's the wonderful Vin Stone. Yes. And I'm Jill Bryant. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while, Vin. <laughs> and our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. Our executive producers, Barbara Ant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike, Drummer, Chicago People, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasmia, Sea Monsters, Truggy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Hakeem, our Death Notes, Benjamin, Steven, Nova. Back. We got Jason, <laughs> the Otko, I saw the Otko earlier, Sacred Egg. Oh yeah, he's Mark. in. Yeah. Episode 393, not 939. But if you we read got- it backwards, it's still 393. <laughs> yes. We got Mir in there. Lots of our wonderful peeps. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>